The Clippers have reportedly talked with multiple teams about trading Paul George and gauging his overall value with the league. What? This is supposed to be a team that is all in on winning with the duo of Kawhi Leonard and PG. I mean, look at what Kawhi literally just said about this team's championship ambitions and their goals for next year. Uh, that's all I'll I'm worried about right now I'm trying to just keep collecting these wins and it's clear that the stars of this team are dedicated to one thing winning now but something has been holding them back injuries and this could ultimately be the reason why the Clippers blow up their roster and trade both of their star players as soon as next offseason No NBA star can escape injuries, but this NBA duo has had the injury bug so bad that one NBA executive said it's killing their team's culture. And I mean, they're kind of right. Not knowing if you'll have your stars night to night not only kills the team's momentum, but it also kind of kills their culture as well. Don't get me wrong here, Kawhi and PG are two of the best characters not only on the Clippers, but in the entire NBA. But their inability to stay healthy is ultimately what's killing the team, and it looks like the Clippers front office is finally realizing this as well. Here is a list of all the injuries that PG and Kawhi have sustained since joining the Clippers four years ago, which has caused them to play just 142 games together, including the playoffs. If these were just in the regular season even, it wouldn't even matter that much. But as we saw last year in the playoffs, these injuries come at the worst moments for the Clippers stars. And with the Clippers roster as it is, if Kawhi or PG goes down with injury, their chances of a championship go from solid to slim to none. So what can the Clippers front office do to maximize this team's chance at a championship next year? Well, there are really two options that this Clippers team can take to try and win it all next year. And if they fail in either of these, it's safe to say that they'll likely blow up their entire roster and trade both PG and Kawhi. Option one for this Clippers team is very simple, trading for star talent that can help them win at the highest level if one of their stars goes out. If the team doesn't have faith in Paul George or Kawhi Leonard staying healthy for the entire following season and playoffs, they might consider adding a third player that can be a second or third option on a championship team. And as far as this role goes, there has only been one player in the rumors for the Clippers. Yes, Mr. Fat Suit himself, James Harden, asked out of Philly to go to the Clippers, giving him the title of the most trade demands by a single player in NBA history. But James Harden is trying to make this, so it's not the only title he ends up with when his career's all said and done. We've seen time and time again that this man collapses in the playoffs. This is the exact reason that the Clippers would be trading for Harden, as insurance in case Kawhi or PG goes down and the team needs another star in the playoffs to be successful. But with James Harden's track record of playoff success, this move really doesn't make sense for the Clippers to make. The package that's been floating around is James Harden in exchange for Norman Powell and Marcus Morris. And honestly, I don't hate this package for the Clippers. Let's be honest here though, there's no chance that the 76ers take this deal. If Joel Embiid sees the front office trade his co-star for two role players, what do you think he'll do? I don't know about you, but to me, the odds of him demanding a trade go up exponentially if the 76ers make this move. The point is, I don't really see this trade happening because it just doesn't make sense for both sides, especially with the package that's been floating around. But could we see the Clippers make a big swing trade for another star? The only stars that have really been in rumors besides Harden are Damian Lillard, who's either staying in Portland or going to Miami, Zach Levine, whose trade package asking price is way too high for the Clippers, and there have been whispers of Carl Anthony Towns, but I just don't see that happening right now, especially with how little Rudy Gobert and Cat played together last year. Obviously, the Clippers don't really have a realistic chance of trading for any of these guys without giving up one of their two stars. But what about one of Zach Levine's teammates, DeMar DeRozan? The Bulls have been actively shopping Levine for the past couple months now, and it's safe to say that they're close to pulling the plug on their roster and going into a full rebuild. With Lonzo Ball being done with basketball entirely and the team being in an awkward part of the standings that no franchise wants to be, there's a good chance that they pull the plug and blow things up. But either way, they have to decide if they want to trade for a star or trade everyone away and enter the rebuild. At age 33, 
DeMar DeRozan fits pretty well on the Clippers timeline, and his value will definitely be lower than Levine's. He's also on the last year of his contract this season, so there's a good chance the Bulls shop him around anyway if they know he's not going to resign. The trade that would get this done is pretty simple. The Clippers send out Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, and Amir Coffey to Chicago for DeMar DeRozan. The Bulls will probably take anything they can get for DeMar, being that he's on an expiring deal, and they really make this trade for Amir Coffey, who is a solid young talent on the timeline of their younger players. Obviously, this trade only goes down or even makes sense for that matter if the Bulls plan to rebuild. But other than this trade package, I really don't see any other ones on the market that make sense, are realistic, and actually increase this team's odds of a championship. This leads us to option two, which is probably the option that this team should do. Run it back. This Clippers roster is one of the deepest in the NBA with some solid veteran and young talent, which as we just saw with the Nuggets championship run is key to winning it all. And are we going to forget that this team brought back Russell Westbrook who took the biggest pay cut in NBA history because he felt as though he found a home in LA? Obviously, this team's culture isn't that bad after what Russ did, so I think it's safe to say that Russ, Kawhi, PG, and honestly the rest of this team are super hungry for playoff success. Like I've said, if this team is healthy, they're instantly championship contenders, and if the Clippers want to bank on the fact that their stars will stay healthy this one season, I honestly think they should do it. But what happens if Kawhi or PG gets injured? Because we kind of have to cover this at this point based on the team's track record. If this happens again and the Clippers don't have one or both of their stars for the playoffs, they're gonna blow it up. And there's just no way around it. It's been four years, so at this point if this team doesn't even make it close to the finals, it's just time to be done. What doesn't make sense to me is the Clippers talks about trading away Paul George, because although he has been injured quite a bit, his injuries are nothing compared to Kawhi's because at this point, the man's knees are practically destroyed. Here is a list of PG's injuries, and as you can see, these are a lot more minor or at least less serious than Kawhi's. You had a hyperextension, a shoulder injury, nothing consistently in the same place, which is why I believe that Paul George has just gotten kind of unlucky. But here's Kawhi's injuries since joining the Clippers and as you can see, it's all consistently in one place pretty much. Like I said, Kawhi, like it or not, has old man knees at this point, and we just don't know if he's going to be consistent when it comes to staying healthy and on the court. Because of this, it's kind of a no-brainer that the Clippers should move Kawhi before PG. The perfect destination for Leonard is a team that has a young star capable of being the number one option on a championship team, and a ton of depth and role players to help them. In this instance, Kawhi doesn't have to be the guy on a championship championship team, and as far as the team trading for Kawhi, they'd obviously have some pressure to win now from their young star, and they just want to make that one last push to put them over the top and make them contenders. And of course, they have to have the assets to get the deal done. Obviously, players could move between now and next offseason, but for fun, let's take a look at two of the teams that are most likely to trade for Kawhi if he does in fact get hurt or the Clippers fail in the playoffs. First up, Leonard goes back to the Lone Star State, but this time with the Dallas Mavericks. This is in the case that the Kyrie Luka duo crashes and burns in the playoffs next year, if they even make it, and owner Mark Cuban is scrambling to get another star for Luka so he doesn't demand a trade. In this package, the Clippers get Tim Hardaway Jr., Grant Williams, Josh Green, and Jaden Hardy for Kawhi Leonard. Yes, Cuban might be crazy enough to pull off this trade. And honestly, it's kind of perfect. The Clippers get some solid young talent in exchange for their aging star. And the Mavericks get a new big three that could shock the NBA. Massive gamble for the Mavs? Yeah. But if they crash and burn in the playoffs again, they'll have to prove to Luka that they're loyal and want to build a contending team around him, and honestly, there's no better trade to do that than this one. And if they don't, they might just lose their young star. In a similar situation, we look at yet another interesting trade, but this time, it's in Minnesota. In this trade package, the Clippers send off Kawhi in exchange for Carl Anthony Towns, Kyle Anderson, and draft capital if needed. With Towns already in the rumors, this trade makes a lot of sense for the Wolves. Their new GM takes another big swing to try and put this team in championship contention. And I don't know about you, but a healthy Kawhi Leonard, prime Anthony Edwards, and a plethora of depth that's honestly pretty underrated on both sides of the ball, this team could definitely have some postseason success. 
We already know that Paul George and Carl Anthony Towns are boys, so this trade honestly makes a decent amount of sense for both sides. Whether you like the trades or not, we can all agree on one thing. This Clippers team needs to win right now. But so do the Warriors. I mean, this team just made a big trade for Chris Paul to contend, right? Well, maybe not actually. Click here to watch this video and find out why Chris Paul positions the Warriors perfectly to make a mid-season trade that could shock the NBA.